is the maple syrup and the honey licensing exemptions. Um, my name is Charlie. I'm with the state of Wisconsin Department of Agriculture. I'm on the licensing team and here you can see um, a couple of my coworkers that are on my team. So you will get answers to any emails or, or phone calls um, either from myself, Nicole or Mark. Um, sometimes Dan will answer a few. Um, he's also one of our folks that does a little bit of uh he's on the licensing team in a part-time fashion so um, we're the folks who will answer these questions we can kind of help you out depending on where um you know what you need or, or what questions you need answered um i did uh retail and rec work with waukesha county for about four years and then i went to the state and i did manufactured food inspections for another three in the city of milwaukee so that's where i'm coming from and then i've also been in this role for a few years now so um, let me know if you have questions again one of the first things i like to talk about is our mission and vision here at dadcap uh, this is one of the things that we are we are highlighting and talking about just to talk about promoting quality of food, um, you know, really sound use of land and water resources in a fair marketplace. I always really like to, to highlight the vision, which is where we talk about the efficient and effective programs. Uh, that's something that I think we all take to heart and try to, to do on a daily basis. So I wanted to just highlight that. And then our mission and vision at the at the larger the division of food and recreational safety we're trying to ensure that safe food lodging and recreation by educating and regu regulating businesses in a fair effective and efficient manner so that we see that come back right away and then the vision um, itself wanting to be that national leader so when we're talking about um what statutes impact our food program i wanted to highlight this and bring this up right away i'm sure some of you have seen this before but i always like to bring this up so that we know when we're talking to folks about regulation when we are you know saying this is why you have to do something or whatever the case is um, i always like to point back to the regulation itself so that we have a good foundation a good spot of where we are coming from and where we are you know pulling some of those resources and that information and those references so today we'll be kind of specifically talking about um 97.29 the food processing plants and the 97.30 which is the retail food so just wanted to highlight those uh those those chapters right up at the beginning and then as we kind of get into it we can talk about the administrative codes so you know i i think in general um you were very familiar with 75 which is the retail food establishments and then the appendix which is the wisconsin food code the, the food processing plant one, um, Administrative Code 70, is also relevant in this conversation. But specifically today, we're really talking about and um, touching upon Administrative Code 87, which is that honey and maple syrup one. So I just wanted to have a conversation about that and kind of show, again, where those regulations are coming from. The third thing I wanted to talk about was what is retail exempt? Um, so this is really going to come into play, especially with <clears throat> maple syrup and the honey, because when we're looking at, you know, at a farmer's market, for example, and you're walking around, you're doing your inspections, you need to know what to look for and what not to, you know, what not to look for, what's exempt. But one of the things is looking at the prepackaged from an approved source where they're not processing on site and then nothing is potentially hazardous meaning it doesn't need that refrigeration or uh you know frozen for food safety purposes so that's why we are uh assigning an, a license to for example if they're selling the the meat right or or an egg product that's why we're doing that transient license with that we're need we're not meeting that second bullet point now to kind of talk about the uh, the star of the show this morning, the maple syrup, uh, and you can see we already already we're already talking about ninety seven point two nine. So you can go ahead and look that up if you'd like to. That's a direct quote from it. So um, a place that is used solely for producing and packaging maple syrup or concentrated maple sap. I wanted to highlight that portion, um, the maple syrup aspect of it, because we're not talking about other types of syrups, right? Those will need licensure. Um, one of the most common ones that we get, or one of the ones that I highlight, uh, for example, is, is elderberry, right? So that one is not. You can see in the statute, in that code, that it, we're specifically talking about maple syrup or concentrated maple sap. And we're talking, uh, this is the exemption language. OK, so for sale directly to consumers or to a food processing plant licensed under this section, because again, we're in 97.29, which is the food processing plant of the code. 
and um, if those sales, those sales do not exceed 5,000 in any 12 month period. Uh, so that's what we're kind of looking at. And that's the, the big part of this. Uh, this covers only the wholesale product, this part of it, and the 5,000 does not include the retail sales. And what we're going to want to see from folks is that they're keeping a written record of every sale and they're retaining that record for at least two years. The record must be available for inspection and copying by DADCAP upon request. The record shall include the name and address of the purchasing processor, the date of sale, and the amount of maple syrup per concentrated maple sap sold and the sale price. So that's what we're looking for. Um, that we have that maple sap registration form that we can hand out to folks if that's something. Now, as we get into this, right, we're going into this kind of uh, a dichotomy of what is license exempt versus what is needing that food processing plant license. So they, this is a really good slide. I will send this out to people. This is one of my favorite ones because it lays it out pretty clearly. So let's say you go out to the <clears throat> farmer's market and you see that somebody is selling the maple syrup, but it, they've added ingredients. Whatever that ingredient is, I, you know, pick whatever you want, but they're adding ingredients or you have a feeling they're mixing in other syrups. Um, you, you can always give us a call or an email and we can verify if they do have a food processing plant license. We can look them up within our system. Now, when you go out there and you're looking at those, they should have a label on it that has a declaration of responsibility, which is the name, address and other identifying information of the manufacturer packer or distributor so those are the things that sometimes we will we will ask for because it's easier for us to look it up you know in case they're doing it in a dba or whatever you know they're they're whatever the label is might not help us to look up that license itself sometimes we'll ask for to see that that actual label because that just helps us and makes the process go a little bit faster but this is what we're looking for so you can always give us a call to to start that conversation and again, these labels, if you see them out and about, um, if they need that food processing plant license or they have the food processing plant license, they have to conform to minimum requirements. So we're looking at that common name of the food, name and location of the processor or distributor, and the net quantity. Um, and they also need to be labeled according to standards found in Administrative Code 87, which is that honey and maple syrup, or labeled ungraded. So those are some of the things as well that we're looking at. But I think what we really need to highlight the license <clears throat> exempt, which is no license from production farm or farmer's market, no license to sell up the food processor up to food 5,000. Food processing plant, we're looking at adding ingredients, mixing in other syrup, and then exceeding that $5,000 uh, mark when you're selling to other processors. So that's really what we're looking at. Um, now, on our forward facing site, I think there's also a lot of really good information on the DACAP forward facing site for the maple syrup. That's something I can send out or or a link or whatever the case is that um, you know anybody can take a look at. So I think that's also a really good resource and I, I look at it and I use it as well. So these are just really good places to go if you're having questions about it. Honey. So honey, um, again, we're looking at that 97.29. So that's that food processing plant. But um, this is, we're looking at the exemption, right? So a place used by a beekeeper solely for extracting honey from the comb or producing and selling raw honey or raw bee products. So a license is required if the processor is packaging bee products. So that's honey, pollen, um, or royal jelly from a source other than that is produced from, you know, from their own apiaries or if air or flavorings are added. So that's the really, that's kind of the key part, right? Is if, um, if air or flavorings are added. I remember I had a conversation, I did a, a presentation at the Walworth, I think it was the Walworth County Beekeepers Association, but somebody had asked about, um, they were going to take their honey, which they made at their, their apiary, which, you know, great, okay, fine. But then they wanted to add, they had a packet of some sort of, they're gonna make it hot honey. And so they had, you know, some sort of chili flake or, or other, whatever the case was. And the question was, did they need a license? And I said, well, the honey itself, if you're packaging it and you're just, you know, you're selling it under this exemption, that that's acceptable. But then the the real kind of what we got into and kind of the, the thick of it was we talked about what is required for the when they are packaging those little, you know, I think they were little uh, 
try out, you know, like little bags of the the chili powder or the chili flakes and, and some sort of jelly or something. Um, but that process would have need to be uh, uh, regulated or licensure would have needed to happen for that. Um, and so again, we're looking at labels must conform to minimum requirements. We're looking at that common name of the food, name, location of the processor, distributor, net quantity. Um, and those labeling and standards are found in eight, uh, administrative code 87, or they need to be labeled ungraded. So it's it's along the lines of that, uh, of the maple syrup. So this is probably the first two questions that we ask somebody when they are coming in or they're saying, hey, I'm a honey producer. These are the, the two big questions that we ask, and these are also, again, outlined on our forward facing site. So I think they're um, that's a really good resource as well um, to look at. But these are kind of the big ones that we ask um, and, and really one of the common questions as well is, you know, maybe you're adding flavor, color, other ingredient, but when you are processing your or your own or others honey into other products such as candy that's that's one of the big questions is candy and whether they need uh, whether they need a license for that so that is um one of the ones that we we kind of ask about is candy as well and so asking on those questions so let's see we answer no to those um, so no and no, I think that's important to highlight. Um, no license is needed. You can sell from your home, farmer's market, retail, wholesale, and then as an ingredient to food processors. So this is um, the first part of it is if we're saying no and no, not and, you know, no and or no. Um, now, if you're saying yes to either of these, um, then you would need that license. That's when the licensure would come into place. That's when we would ask some of those probing questions and try to triage of whether you need a um, a retail license or if you're looking at a wholesale license. So um, one of the really important things to keep in mind is if they're issued a retail license, uh, we are looking at, you know, you're doing retail, but you can wholesale up to that 25% of the gross food sales, non-meat, non-dairy. So we're not talking about that right now. Uh, we're just talking about a honey product. It would be if they're under 25% wholesale um, and they're largely retail or primarily retail, we would issue that retail license. And then we'd ask those questions of where is your, your processing area? Where's your commercial kitchen space? Now, if it's, for example, you know, in an agent county, we're going to direct them to the agent county. If it's a, if it's a county that's regulated by a dad cap, we're going to take over that licensure and, and complete that. If it's a processing plant license, that's something that the state of Wisconsin issues. And so that's if it's largely wholesale. They could do that under 25% of the retail, the direct uh, consumer sales, the online sales, for example, they could they could absolutely do that. Um, and so if you have somebody and you ask these questions and they say, eh, we're gonna do primarily wholesale, you can send them our way and we'll get them licensed stuff. We'll have that conversation. We'll start that process with them, get them that information to get that food processing plant license, which is again, that administrative code 70 that I touched on. So those are the questions that we ask as we're kind of moving forward with anybody that is looking to do a honey product. Um, and that would be, again, we're, we're adding, you know, the colorings, flavorings or the other ingredients, including air. So who issues the license? Again, I touched on this, but we have that multi-jurisdictional program for retail food establishment licensing. Um, if they have a transient or mobile license, uh, it should be accepted by all jurisdictions in the state. Uh, you can charge an inspection fee. That's, that's fine. Um, and we, as the state of Wisconsin, so DADCAP will regulate those food processing plants, warehouses, dairy plants, meat establishments. Um, you can call and email us and we can check if they hold any of the licenses. Uh, I can look up um, in most agent counties and see what's going on, see if they hold a license. So we can always be that resource to kind of help out, to answer some of those questions, to to start that conversation. That's totally fine. So you can, you can give us a call. We'll help out in that, uh, that aspect. So these are our two, you know, places that we like to we like to shout out and talk about. 
So again, we have the our light our uh, email address, our licensing email, and then the phone number. You can also reach out to myself or the member of the team directly. Um, I did list our cell phones at the beginning of that. If you want those, um, or you want those in a different capacity, or we can send them out. That's totally fine. Just let us know. We're here to help out. We are here to you know get people licensed up, make sure they're in the right spot. But other than that, um, the maple syrup and the honey, um, largely at ex exemption, um, just looking for any specifics or if you have any questions, um, we can kind of help them out and, and see what's going on there. Um, so I guess with that, I know this is a little bit short and sweet, but any questions or anything right away? Uh, I think you can go ahead and I, I believe you can unmute yourself. Um, just I think I know. can. Can you hear me, okay. Charlie? It's Laura Temke. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Laura. How are you? Good. I'm good. So I have a question. Should we not rely on the uh, license lists um, that are on DabCap's website online? You can absolutely use those. Those are okay. a great, great, great resource. Um, yeah, we send those out. I think those are updated uh, quarterly, if memory serves okay. me correctly. But yeah, those are an awesome spot to go look up that license. Um, but if you have a question, if they're recently licensed, then we can help out as well. But yeah, thank you for that. All right, sounds good. Cool, thanks. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you, yep. Okay, I was just wondering, is there anything different or required for whipped honey? If that's the only thing they're doing is just whipping it and there's no other difference? Yeah, if they're adding air, that would be something where okay. that would be licensed here. Yeah, and that's something too where um, here I can show you. Uh, can you guys see this? Hopefully everybody can see this. But um, yes, they can see it, Charlie. Okay, just to make sure. Uh, so here we, even, even, you know, including whipping with air. So um, yeah, that would be something where that is the processing, and that would be something where we would require that license. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, absolutely. Charlie, it's Jennifer from Racine County. Um, so I see a lot of um, honey vendors that don't mm -hmm. require a license. Um, a lot of them don't put on their product that it's ungraded, and I get a lot of grumbly <laughs> uh, vendors that say, well, there is no process to get things Graded. Can you kind of go over what the process is to get the product graded? Yeah, so it it goes into it in in eighty seven. So in that administrative code, the Wisconsin standards are are laid out in eighty seven. So that's something that they can they can do. But um, Wisconsin standards are able to be used, and all the honey crop must be graded. Um, the only exception is that you can sell ungraded honey from your own premise. Um, so in 87, it goes through the, the grading process and what you would need to, to do those um, and what we would expect to see if they did grade them. Um, let me see if I can, I did have these, the grading requirements. But yeah, they would, they would, it's all outlined in 87 if they were to choose to do that. So that would be, you know, if they're, if they're looking to do that, they would have to go to 87 and start that process. Because it goes into quite a bit of detail in the and the in the actual code about what is expected and what they would want to see out of that. So let me I can pull it up here. But this is what they would be looking at, and then they would go into the grading, um, and then we even have more information on our site. But this all kind of shows what they would expect to see or what the grading process would look like. Does that help out or answer that question? Yes. Um, okay. Is there anything that, so basically what I do is when I walk around a farmer's market, I see a honey vendor that I haven't seen before. I look at their label. You know, if it doesn't say ungraded, I ask them to add it. And at okay. least seven times out of 10, they don't. Um, Okay. So it's it's just me repeating myself over and over and over again to get them to write it on there. So I guess is there anything that the state has that will we could maybe send out to Honey? Like a like a informational or anything or yeah. 
Yeah, I can I can look into that and certainly see if we have any resources beyond the website. Absolutely. And see if we can do anything there. Looks like we got a question from Madeline. Hi, Charlie. It's Maddie from UW. Hey, Maddie. Um, I just want to clarify. Um, if we're doing an inspection at retail and our, say, restaurant has honey and maple syrup on the shelf, um, maple and on the shelf, like being used as an ingredient in one of their foods. Mm -hmm. um, for maple syrup, it needs to come from a producer, but it doesn't necessarily need to come from a licensed facility if it's honey. Right. Yep. With the honey, you can. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. You could you could wholesale with the honey. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank that, you. That's yep. That's acceptable. Again, coming from their own apiary um, and not adding any any of those extra things, but probably the big thing is the apiary because if they can support that or not. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Pat. Hi, Charlie. Um, on the back of that question, um, so they can they can wholesale, but it's still limited to that five thousand dollar total, correct? Now with the honey, it's the oh no, th yeah, that would be the the maple syrup. That's oh, what we're looking the at. Maple. Yeah, okay, the maple yeah. syrup is the five thousand. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's the the no license up to a, a food processor up to that five thousand dollars. Okay. Yep. And um, one other thing, I might have missed this. I had to take a phone call on the uh, on the labeling. So you're at a farmer's market. It's uh, let's say honey or and maple syrup. Um, what is and it's from a unlicensed, license exempt producer. What's all required to be on that label other than the ungraded? Yeah, they need to have the minimum requirement. So common name of the food, name and location of the processor or distributor, and the net quantity. So just kind of those minimum requirements all, that we all look at. All the same at. stuff as anybody else. Okay, thanks. Yeah, because if it's yeah, if it's just a one, in, you know, for example, like honey, if it's just honey, um, the ingredient list wouldn't be right. necessary, right? Um, yep. It's just the one ingredient. But if they're having to get that license and they're adding in the other ingredients, then they would need to have an order of predominance with any applicable sub ingredients and all that, all that, you know, allergens if those are needed as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions out there? Hearing none. Cool. Yeah, I can only make the the exemptions go for so long with honey and maple syrup. Yeah. <laughs> they're uh, you know, they're pretty cut and dry in the in the code, which I think we can all appreciate. Well, thank you again for presenting and for the folks that joined in a little bit later, um, just a housekeeping announcement that um, we will not have 